Hello, Dark Reader, and welcome to the Dark Side of the Library podcast. I'm your host, Katie. Today on this episode, we're going to do a two-parter, actually. We're doing adult fiction, finally, new releases that are in June 2023. So if you do like horror, gothic reads, etc., make sure to keep listening, subscribe, and join us over on our socials and our Amazon Live channel, by the way. So let's get started on all of these new releases. We have six books today. Sorry, we have nine books today. I had, I flipped it in my brain. I had a moment. Uh, Okay, so we're going to start off today with Dead 11. This came out June 27th, and this is by Jimmy Giuliano. We have our main character, Willow Stone, who finds words written on the floor of her deceased son's bedroom. And obviously she's perplexed. (laughs) Of all the emotions, perplexed is apparently the one. She's never heard of it before, but soon learns it's a tiny island off of Wisconsin's Door County Peninsula, 200 miles from Willows' home. So the word that was written on the floor is Clifford Island. So yeah, that would be, I guess, a a red herring, like, oh, dead, deceased, deceased son and random place. Anyway, why would her son write this on the floor? Determined to find answers, Willow sets out for the island. After a few days on Clifford, Willow realizes this place is just not normal. Everyone seems to be stuck in a particular day in 1994. They wear outdated clothing, avoid modern technology, and perhaps most mystifyingly, watch the O.J. Simpson car crash every single evening. When she asks questions, people are evasive, but she learns one thing. Close your curtains at night. Ooh, okay. Uh, So high schooler Lily Becker has lived on Clifford her entire life, and she is sick of the island's twisted mythology and and adhering to their rules. She's been to the mainland, and everyone is normal there. So why is Clifford so weird? Lily is determined to prove that the islanders' beliefs are a sham, but are they? Five weeks after Willow arrives on the island, she disappears. Willow's brother Harper comes to Clifford searching for his sister, and when he learns the truth that the island is far more sinister than anyone could have imagined, he is determined to blow this whole thing open if he can get out alive. There's a lot of different characters here. It's, I thought it was going to focus more on Willow, but apparently we start to evolve and we get the sister, and then we get Lily as well. Not sister, the brother. Sorry. Uh, So check this one out if this seems interesting to you. This is called Dead 11. This is by Jimmy Giuliano, and it was published by Dutton Publishing. Next on our list today is The Devil's Playground. Uh, This is by Craig Russell. That's like a classic title. So this came out June 20th. Craig Russell also wrote the book The Devil's Aspect. He's got a thing for devilly things, I guess. We are set in 1927. Our main character, Mary Reork, a Hollywood studio fixer, is called urgently to the palatial home of Norma Carlton, one of the most recognizable stars in American silent films. So keep that in mind, silent films. Norma has been working on the secret film everyone is openly talking about, a terrifying horror picture called The Devil's Playground that... This is rumored to have unleashed a curse on everyone involved in the production. Like Macbeth! Mary finds Norma's cold, dead body and wonders just for a moment if these rumors are actually true. Fast forward into 1967. We have Paul Conway, who's a journalist and self-professed film aficionado. He's on the trail of a tantalizing rumor. He's learned that a single copy of The Devil's Playground is still in existence, potentially. He knows his Hollywood history and he knows the film endured a myriad of tragedies and ended up lost to time. So we have a really cool thriller that kind of goes back and forth into time exploring uh, silent films and the golden age of Hollywood. This sounds like a very intriguing novel and so far it's gotten pretty good reviews over on Goodreads. This is The Devil's Playground by Craig Russell. Next on our list today is The Edge of Sleep. This is by J.K. Manuel and Willie Block and Jason Gurley. So what if the whole world fell asleep and just did not wake up? David Torres is a night watchman in a placid coastal town 
and he knows all about sleep troubles. Since childhood, he's battled terrors and nightmares. Sometimes those battles leak into his waking life with disastrous consequences for those he loves. Ooh. Now Dave lives alone and self-medicates to neutralize his dreams. It's not much of a life, and he knows that. The morning after Independence Day, Santa Mira, California is so quiet, Dave can hear the ocean from miles away. Traffic signals blink from red to green over empty intersections. Storefronts remain locked up tight. Every radio station whispers static. And all over town, there are bodies lying right there where their owners left them, dead right where they slept. Ooh. Dave, along with his ex-girlfriend Katie, his best friend Mateo, and Linda, a nurse he's just met, struggle to unravel the mystery before sleep overtakes them all. It's interesting it only affect or it never affected them. Except the answer to the mystery might lie in the one place that frightens Dave the most, his twisted, unnerving dreams. Now, Dave and his friends must straddle the liminal boundary between life and death as they fight to save everyone they've ever loved and to keep their eyes open. Because if anyone falls asleep now, it will be the last thing they ever do. I'm interested in this as somebody who also tends to have sleeping issues. I have nightmares quite often or just, you know, lucid dreams. Uh, I am really curious about this. It sounds fun. This is The Edge of Sleep. This is by Jake Emanuel, Willie Block, and Jason Gurley. Next on our list today, we have a book called The First Bright Thing. This came out June 13th. It's by J.R. Dawson, and it has some seriously good reviews on Goodreads. Ringmaster Rin, to those who know her best, can jump to different moments in time as easily as her wife Odette soars from bar to bar on the trapeze. And the circus they lead is a rare home and safe haven for magical misfits and outcasts known as Sparks. With the world still reeling from World War I, Ren and her troupe, the Circus of the Fantasticals, travel the Midwest, offering a single night of enchantment and respite to all who step into the big top. But threats come at Ren from all sides. The future holds an impending war that the Sparks can see barreling toward their show and everyone in it, and Rin's past creeps closer every day, a malevolent shadow she can't fully escape. It takes the form of another circus, with tents as black as midnight, and a ringmaster who rules over his troop with a dangerous power. Rin's circus has something he wants, and he won't stop until it's his. Circus Wars. Okay, this sounds really interesting. So if you are into like night circus e themed books, this is right up your alley. It is called The First Bright Thing. This is by J.R. Dawson. Next on our list today is Foul Play Suspected. This came out June 6th and it's by John Wyndham. Transport to England in 1935. Our main protagonist, potentially, Phyllida Schiffer, her marriage has just ended in divorce. She heads home, expecting to be welcomed with open arms by her father, a brilliant, if slightly distracted, scientist. But her father's house is locked up. He is nowhere to be found, and there are suspicious men who seem to think that Phyllida herself might hold the key to her father's latest discovery. This is kind of a weird crime novel that mixes science fiction and horror together, it is called Foul Play Suspected, very short description. Uh, this is by John Wyndham. I'm curious because so far we only have like a few ratings on Goodreads, but we'll see how it goes. It's pretty decent so far. Next on our list today, we have The Ghost Theater. This is by Matt Osman. Again, get transported to London, but this time it's 1601, a golden city soon to erupt in flames. Shay is a messenger girl, falconer, and fortune teller who sees the future in patterns of birds. Oh, that's so cool. That's very cool. Okay. None such is the dark star of the city's fabled Black Friars Theater, where a cast of press-ganged boys perform for London's gentry. When the pair meet, Shay falls in love with the performances, and with none such himself. As their bond deepens... They create the Ghost Theater, an underground troupe 
that performs fantastical plays in the city's hidden corners. As their fame grows, the troupe fans the flames of rebellion among the city's outcasts, and the lovers are drawn into a dark web of the Elizabethan court. Embattled with the plague on the rise throughout the country, the queen seeks a reading from Shay, a moment which unleashes chaos not only in Shay's life, but across the whole of England too. So this book is kind of like a fever dream. It's got lots of prophecy, uh, full of anarchy, gutter rats, and bird gods. This sounds so cool. It's a wild ride from the rooftops of Elizabethan London to its dark underbelly and a luminous meditation on double lives and fluid identities and the bewitching, transformative nature of art and power with a bittersweet love affair at its heart. So this is called Ghost Theater. This is by Matt Osman. Next, we have I Am Homeless, If This Is Not My Home. This is by Lori Moore, and it came out June 20th. It's a dark humor book, and it is talking about, I mean, it's kind of like a modern age ghost story. A teacher visiting his dying brother in the Bronx, a mysterious journal from the 19th century stolen from a boarding house, a therapy clown, and an assassin, both presumed dead, but perhaps not dead at all. This is a ghost story set in the 19th century and 21st centuries. Um, we talk about grief, devotion, uh, and the vanishing and persistence of all things, seen and unseen. So this novel includes, like, historical flashbacks. Uh, we have bleak letters to a sister from the Civil War era. There are reflections on everything from mobile phone obsession to the mentality of a school shooting generation. There's a lot of themes in this book, different stories, different people. Um, it sounds really interesting. I definitely think I will probably try to find this in my library. So this is called I Am Homeless If This Is Not My Home. This is by Lori Moore. Next on my list today is Killing Lee. This is by Katherine Butner, and it came out June 20th. In Massachusetts in 1897, Bertha Mellish was the most, quote, the most peculiar, peculiar, quiet and reserved girl at Mount Holoki College, and she is missing. As the search team dredges the pond where Bertha might have drowned, her panicked father and sister arrive desperate to find some clue to her fate and for her state of mind. Bertha's best friend Agnes, who's a scholarly loner studying medicine, might actually know the truth, but she's been unhelpful, tight-lipped, inciting the suspicions of Bertha's family, her classmates, and the private investigator hired by the Mellish family doctor. As secrets from Agnes's and Bertha's lives come to light, so do competing agendas driving each person who is searching for Bertha. Where did Bertha go? Who would want to hurt her? And could she actually be alive? So this is actually based on a unsolved real-life disappearance of a real student from Mount Holuki, who where I've never heard before. It's definitely a haunting novel. I like that it is kind of based in reality. So this is called Killingly by Katherine Butner. Next and final book on this list today has a wild cover. As you could see here, it's called Maeve Fly. This came out June 6th and it's by CJ Lead. It is gory. It's brutal. I mean, of course it is. Look at that. I mean, again, review this cover. By day, Maeve Fly works at the happiest place in the world as every child's favorite princess. By the neon glow of the sunset strip, Maeve haunts the dive bars with a drink in one hand and a book in another, imitating her misanthropic literary heroes. But when Gideon Green, her best friend's brother, moves to town, he awakens something dangerous in her, and the world she knows suddenly shifts between, beneath her feet. Untethered, Maeve ditches her discontented act and tries a new persona, a bolder, bloodier one, inspired by the pages of American Psycho. So step aside, Patrick Bateman, it's Maeve's turn with the knife. Oh man, this is hilarious. Uh, so this is Maeve Fly. This is by CJ Lead, and I'm definitely going to be picking this one up. It sounds hilarious and awesome. So this is just part one of our 
Dark Fiction releases from June 2023. Make sure to stay tuned for part two. We like to publish usually every Wednesday and Friday. Sometimes I'll publish on a Monday. And make sure to tune into our socials, which is listed down below in the description at Dark Side of the Library and our Amazon live channel at amazon.com slash live slash Dark Side of the Library. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.